I went back to a sermon that I didn't do too good years ago, Brother John. <laughs> you know, and sometimes you just want to fix what you messed up. <laughs> I went all the way back to 2012 and pulled this one up. Because it ties in with where I've been carrying you for the last few Sundays. Those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Timothy, the first chapter, and beginning at the 8th verse. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, beginning at the 8th verse. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, beginning at the 8th verse. And when you found this passage of Scripture, we ask that you signify by saying, Amen. And it reads, so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Somebody say holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. For just a few moments, a few moments, I just want to, to prick on your mind this thought. Stop being ashamed of God. Stop being ashamed of God. Hmm. We've all been ashamed of something in our lives as we have passed through this life God has given us. Perhaps it was something we did, something we said, how we acted in a certain situation or how we reacted to a certain situation. Because you know, sometimes we'll pop off. Then we'll realize that we popped off. Say amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Or how we, 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 we acted in a time when we really didn't have to do what we did. Somebody knows what I'm saying. We have all experienced shame. In this text, Paul is writing to Timothy for the second time because he is discouraged by the things going on around him and in his life and in the life of his friends. Paul realizes that Timothy is growing ashamed of the gospel because of the affliction, the persecution, the trials that come along with saying you are a kid of the king. Paul wanted Timothy to know that there were some things in life that, that, that we must never be ashamed of. In, in your life, there may, be, may have been times when you felt the shame of who you are and what you believe as a Christian on the playground with your friends, come on, who are not believers, young people. There are times when we, we will hope that, that no one finds out that we are believers, come on, y'all, as we sit at work at the lunch table. You can say amen. Maybe we are ashamed to admit that we love the Lord and are trusting him to save our souls because 
no one else at the family reunion while they're drinking believes the same thing. Mm. Maybe we are ashamed to speak up in a discussion about religious matters because the truth from the Bible differs from what those around us believe in our fraternities and our sororities. Maybe we are ashamed to just sell out for God like he wants us to. Mm. Oh, get this one. Maybe there is a shame over some failure in our past that haunts us. Church family, whatever the reason, God's people often find themselves ashamed of God and our relationship with God. This passage is designed to teach us that, that there are blessings that God's children have <laughs> through what he's already done for us. Let me, let me work this this morning. I, I won't take long. I won't take long. Nobody said amen when I said that. Here's my first point. You can find it over in verse 8. Find it over in verse 8. And, and it talks there about not being ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Luke 9 and 26. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. His coming is going to be awesome. That's another whole sermon that I want to talk about, but you got to be ready when he comes. And you cannot have to be one that has denied him before he gets there. Instead of shame, we got to find glory in his sufferings. And, and, and Galatians 6 and 14 talks about that. You, you got to find glory in what God has done for us. Hmm. Since I've gotten here, and I made sure to put this in here. Since I've gotten here, I have asked for somebody to give me a baby to sacrifice. <laughs> I guess I'm still looking for that baby, huh? Amen. Hmm. Who else will die for you? Who else will die for you? Who else will give their all for you? Some of your friends won't even give you their last dollar. And you haven't figured out they're not really your friends. Stop being ashamed of God and tell God that you're thankful. Stop being ashamed of what he's done, the testimony. Oh, Lord, the sacrifices that God has given us. Stop being ashamed of God. Huh. Every now and then, you got, you got to sit back in that, what's that old song? I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Amen. Every hour, I need thee. Mm, come on, y'all. I think the next verse is, oh, bless me, Lord, my Savior, mm. I come today. Every now and then, you, you, got, you got to tell the Lord those words. Amen? Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, stop being ashamed. Mm. Point number two. Point number two this morning. It's, you can find it in verses 9 through 10, and it, it tells you there to stop being ashamed of salvation. Mm. Stop being ashamed of salvation. The fact that you're saved. Come on, y'all. That's something to jump up and down about. Paul reminds Timothy that he is saved. The word is in a tense. Come on. And that, that means it's already done. Oh, y'all better say amen this morning. It's already complete. We, we're saved and will remain saved forever. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Mm. Hebrews 2 and 3 reminds us that, 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 that we have this great salvation. The word great refers to the magnitude 
of our salvation. Mm. It, it, it's so glorious in what it offers us that we have not even begun to comprehend what God has done for us. Mm. Ephesians 2 and 7 says that it will take eternity for the Lord to reveal all that we have and all in him. It will take eternity. And what's sad, there's some that's never going to figure it out. Oh, y'all better say amen. Mm. We're saved by grace. Unmerited love and favor of God for sinners. Don't look at anybody when I say of sinners, because I'm talking about each one of us. Amen. Each of us was manifested. That, 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 that grace, that unmerited love was manifested toward us even before the world was ever formed. That, 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 that's before those babies were a twinkle in your eyes. Before Adam was formed, grace had already been extended through Christ Jesus. Grace had already been extended through Christ Jesus. Come on, y'all. Paul tells Timothy that through his suffering on the cross, mm, Jesus abolished death. The, the word abolished means to, 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 to render inoperable. Can't happen, won't happen. Mm. The most dreaded enemy of mankind was, 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 was rendered ineffective when Jesus came, when he died and rose again. This is what Paul meant in 1 Corinthians 15 and 55 when he referred to the sting of death being taken away. Do not be ashamed to identify yourself with the cross of Jesus. It is the cross that purchased our salvation. It's the cross that stands as the dividing line between saints and sinners. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 and also all the way over through verse 21 uh, for the message of the cross, get this now, is foolishness to those who are perishing. Mm, you better get this. The, 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 the message, come on, of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Who are perishing to those that don't know him. You don't understand the cross. I hope that's nobody in here. Come on, say amen. But, but to those, but to us, who are being saved, it's the power of God. I'm almost done, y'all. Y'all got to make sure to get that thing right there. When, when, when we know, when we know, when we know what God has done. That's power, Calvin. Mm, that's power when we know what God has done. That's power. That, 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 that's the power to tell your mountains to be moved. When we know that God got up with all power in his hand and told us you have that power, that's the power to tell your enemies be still. That's the power to tell problems in your life be gone. That's the power to pray over your kids. Somebody say amen right now. It's the power in the midst of your sickness to tell yourself, I can get up. When your doctor says, well, I don't know, you tell him, well, you don't need to be my doctor anymore. When the banker says, I don't think we can give it to you, Turn around and tell him, my God has your bank in his hand. When there's issues in your family, it's the power that you can say, hey, we're going to stay together no matter what. Here's point number three. I'm going to let you go. Here's point number three. You, you can find it over in verses 11 through 12. And, then, and, and it talks about not being ashamed of your service for God. 
Now, if you've never done anything for God, you might not know what I'm talking about right now. Say amen. Amen. If you just come to the church and check a square and, and that's all you do, you might not know what Rev is about to talk about right now. Hmm. You, you, you might not know what I'm talking about if you didn't hear Sister Cynthia telling us this morning, hey, it's not just about me. It's about who I'm trying to take to heaven with me. And you can't be ashamed of God and try to take someone to God. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Paul tells Timothy that it is the gospel that compels him to serve the Lord. It is the message of grace that motivates him to, to pour out his life for the glory of God. For the glory of God. That's not your glory. Mm. Too often times we do things and want everybody to see us. Mm. Come on, y'all. This, this morning, I, I got a word of encouragement for everybody who wants to truly serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Here it is. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Paul, Paul reminds us that, that the position in, in, in the Lord's work are, are not of our own choosing. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Rev just said something. When, when he calls, you better answer. The, the, the whole point here is this. The Lord chooses when, where, and how each of us are to serve him. Our job is to be available, willing, and faithful. Rev just said something. That, that means when Rev gives you, you, you that, that task that you think is impossible, just be faithful. Lord wouldn't have brought it to you if, if he didn't think you could do it. Say amen. amen. Be faithful. Paul was suffering for his testimony. He was in prison because he had faithfully served the Lord. This, this, this is a scary truth about the service of the Lord. Those who will faithfully serve him, better get this piece, you're going to be tried. <laughs> you're going to be tested. Mm. I hate to tell you, but you're going to be afflicted. Mm. However, it is this pressure that the Lord uses to mold us in his image. Uh, to mold the clay, the potter has to exert pressure on the clay oh get this now as he does the clay is formed into a shape that pleases him and only him mm. now, 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 now the piece you got to understand about this pressure and some folks say oh lord I don't like when God pressures me but here, here's the, the truth about that thing okay and the good thing about that pressure, for God to be pressing you, he has to be close to you. <laughs> oh, y'all better get that. Mmm, mmm. Lord, press me. Press me. Choke me, Lord, because if you're choking me, you're right on top of me. Potter, potter has to be close to the clay. Somebody say, press me, Lord. Mm. Now look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor. Neighbor, stop being ashamed. Come on and stand to your feet all over the sanctuary.